Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome to Battlefleet Gothic Armada. And as you can see there in the top left corner, it says work in progress. Yes, this is the multiplayer beta. So everything that you see here is subject to change. This is just purely a first look, just to kind of see what we're getting into. Because this is a game that I've been watching for some time now. In fact, since it was first announced. Now, I'm a big Warhammer 40k fan. I'm probably not the person to go to if you're looking for info on the franchise, though, because I know nuts about it, but I really find it absolutely fascinating. And just a heads up, though, uh, my air conditioning is still broken, so... If you hear any background noise and all that, I'll try to edit out as much as possible. But that is kind of what's going on right now. So I've got the windows open and you can hear the motorway down below my house. And the fan in the background, if you hear any of that. That is the reason uh, that's going on there. So I do apologize. It is very warm in here right now. And I am still a little bit sick. I am getting better though. I... that's the reason there's not been any videos out recently, it's just because I couldn't get two sentences out without coughing uh, basically all of my insides out. So that is how bad that was getting. Now I am surviving on a hot mug of ginger. Yes, that is drink made from ginger. Uh, apparently that helps, so... Have a quick sip of that before we begin. So Battlefleet Gothic Armada is a real-time space strategy game and it's quite frankly amazing so we're just gonna go into skirmish mode I have a character on the Imperial Navy that we're gonna check out here I'm just at level 2 so I'm not that far into it alright so this is my fleet currently I have a cruiser I have a couple of light cruisers. This one is badly damaged at the moment. So I have a Dauntless Mark II over here. I have a Tyrant. And we've got a couple of escort ships such as this Cobra Destroyer, Firestorm Frigates, and a Sword Frigate. So uh, how this sort of works is you build your fleet up and each ship has a point value attached to it. So I believe you can see that right here. These escort ships are basically unlimited so if they're destroyed you get an unlimited numbers of those you can fill up an entire fleet with them if you so choose and they're worth very little points but they're also not particularly fantastic they're there to just sort of be cannon fodder and support really and then we've got these light cruisers which are the basic ships that you start off with and they're the ones that have names as well so these Dauntless Mark II's they have torpedoes and I've outfitted them with several abilities so um, they have a point value of 105, whereas the cruiser has a point value of 144, and that, of course, takes into account its much higher hull integrity and shield value, as well as its more numerous broadside ports, as you can see right here. So we've got the macro batteries. It's got a quite a decent size of these, and it's got plasma macro batteries, which are even more powerful against armor. So that's what we're dealing with there. And we can even upgrade these ships with various uh, abilities. I've already upgraded this with a micro warp jump, which could be particularly devastating. I don't know. We'll find out. And a supercharged void shield. So these are abilities that you can use, including torpedoes as well, which are forward firing. You can see the ports right here. We've got six uh, of them in total, and those fire in a straight line forward, which should be quite nice. And of course, we've got these light cruisers, which also have these abilities as well. And we can upgrade them. These are the skills here. And these upgrades, of course, will give us several things like armor piercing ammunition and all these. These are all passives, whereas these skills are all active abilities. And then, of course, we've got the favors, which are the top tier of these things. And I don't really know what to do with them yet, so we'll find out about that. And, of course, the crew. We've got the commissar, navigator, tech priest, master gunner, and so on. And all of these, they, they have different uh, things that they affect. So, for example, if we improve the Tech Priest, we can improve our Emergency Repairs ability. The Navigator will allow us to, I believe, uh, reduce one of the status effects that we get um, from Warp. And the Commissar will, of course, reduce the chance of insubordination, which is another thing that can happen. Similar to sort of, I guess, routing in um, Total War, when uh, the the unit gets demoralized, they'll try to retreat. In this case, they become completely unresponsive. So, 
let's go into battle and let's see how we do. Okay, so this is the fleet setup screen, and you can see we have uh, we have to choose an admiral ship, of course, and we've got 300 points to choose from. So I can put the cruiser here, and then we can add a ship of the line, so we can add our Dauntless Mark II as well here. I think I'm going to add this one. And then we've got space for escort ships. Now, I do want to... I, I probably want a firestorm to do more damage. The Cobra does have torpedoes, but I don't know if that's going to be entirely necessary. So we could throw that in there. And we've got three ships there. Or, alternatively, I can just have the cruiser and then a couple of escort ships. So that's another option there. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the... This Dauntless Mark II, and we're going to have... I think in this case I'm just going to take a firestorm with me. And then we ready up. Now as you level up you will get access to higher point battle battles which will allow you to have much bigger fleets. And of course much larger ships in your fleets all the way up to battleships and dreadnoughts. However, that also means the enemy has that as well. So that's a thing that we have to be aware of. Now this green area is our deployment zone. And the red area over there is the enemy's deployment zone. So I don't know exactly what sort of composition they have. Um, so I'm thinking we could just go with a more central type of thing like that. With the Firestorm over there on the left, kind of escort our cruiser. You can see the actual size difference. These are very, very nicely detailed ships, i got to say. So we could go with that. Uh, I could actually redeploy this a little bit further forward there. And let's just ready up and see how we do. Alright, so... Yes, Admiral. Let's move on up. Now, this is a single plane. So, we don't have verticality to this. Which kind of makes things a little bit easier, although 3D space is a very nice concept and strategy. But, uh, I think it's much better without it. Personally. Okay, so we've got a few contacts on the radar over there. We can actually see that right there. Now, we don't know what ships these are because they have not been identified yet. And there are a couple of things that can happen with that. If we have probes or sensors, we can actually detect them much earlier. Your orders. I'm going to put my ships behind this cloudy little nebula over here. And we'll try to screen ourselves for the time being. Now, we have special maneuvers. We can go all ahead full here, and that will give us a speed boost at the cost of this fuel over here. Uh, but that will reveal our, our, our ships to the enemy. So we don't know what they have, they don't know what we have. But we do know they have four ships versus our three. That could be a problem. Now I'm hoping that means they've got light cruisers instead of cruisers, but then again... That doesn't really give me that much of an advantage. Having more ships still is a bigger advantage, I think, anyway. And, of course, we've got our, our special hard turns as well, high-energy turns. That will allow us to turn and face the enemy for torpedo launches or for ramming, even. Yes, there is ramming in this game. We can activate brace for impact and just ram the Ship enemy ships. Ready. And if we do that, of course, uh, both t parties will take damage, but the heavier ship, of course, will win, so... That's a torpedo launch, so they can still see where we are, they just don't know what we are yet. And we have just lost contact there with one of them. That is a stasis bomb, I think. And that looks like a frigate of some sort. I'm just going to avoid that because I think that's a mine. Yep, that was a disruption bomb, I think. Okay, so we're going to turn ourselves around here. Let's do a hard turn there, and let's... Let's launch those torpedoes. And that's one ship down, so we're already doing much better. Although our frigate there is stuck in uh, stasis. So, kind of having to deal with that. Engines hot! Oh, and we've lost the turret. So that's another thing that can happen. You can actually... He's actually on fire. Um, just activate emergency repairs there to get the fire put out. Uh, you can actually have parts of your ship destroyed. So the bridge can be destroyed. And as well as the... 
the guns on the ship. So we've lost our turret, but we still have our lance there at the front. So we are losing shields pretty fast. I'm going to pull the frigate back out and see if we can spot this one. So they've just hit us with a lightning strike. That's one of the boarding uh, maneuvers that they can actually pull on us. Alright, so we're going to do another high edge in each turn with the light cruiser there. And we're going to launch torpedoes. So we do have to kind of lead the target with these torpedoes here. And I think that's a miss. Oh, that, that's a little bit of a miss there. But that's okay because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ram them. So brace for impact and full speed ahead there. There we go. That's contact right there. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, so we've just lost our turrets there. And um, that's done quite significant amount of damage to us, actually. <laughs> so let's let's drop a lightning strike on him. So what these boarding actions can do is they actually um, have a, t a chance at causing... Oh, I don't believe we can do that with this one. No. Yes, um, they have a chance of causing critical damage, so they can damage any module on the ship, or they can even set fire to the ship, so that's something that we have to be very careful of. I believe that cruiser is stuck in stasis at the moment. So let's just get him out of there. Oh, they've tried a lightning strike on me. Let's try it back on them. And that's a failure as well. We can also do uh, commence a boarding action like so, which will of course be much more powerful than the lightning strike. The lightning strike of course is just a teleported strike, but uh, the boarding action will take longer and it does actually require you to be much closer to the target. I believe all the torpedoes just hit him there. Your orders. And um... But it does have a much higher chance of success. So that was a boarding there. They failed some of the... Well, I guess some of the hits failed, but uh, no, they did actually get some of these shots off and hit us there. So it was a partial success, I, I guess I would say. Let's just warp us a little bit further forward there. To kind of blockade them in. They weren't expecting that, so they're going to have to slow down and maneuver. Uh, and this ship is currently... This uh, that <laughs> light cruiser there was actually trying to warp out and being insubordinate. So we actually executed the captain there, uh, which is one of the actions you can do, which will restore the controllability of the ship, but it will reduce its stats very significantly. This is a very demoralized ship after all. And uh, we do lose our special ability. So what we're going to do is do a suicide run and attempt to knock them out there. And I believe that has actually worked. <laughs> but we are going to lose this ship. Which I'm perfectly okay with at this stage. <laughs> So let's get our cruiser in position for another torpedo launch there. Uh, that looks good. Oh, that, that might actually miss. Oh, one of the torpedoes hit at least. Setting course. Engines to maximum. Oh, the ram missed as well. Cruising speed set. However, can execute a boarding action there. And they have lost some of their weapons there, so... Well, we, we're kind of battered, but we have a chance of winning this. So you can see it's actually, like, as slow as it may initially appear, the, the way this game is played is very, very chaotic, almost. Very, very frantic. We're going to try and turn around and get ourselves into position for another torpedo launch. So torpedoes, because they are physical objects, 
Um, they bypass shields and actually hit the hull directly. And that is definitely something that is uh, very useful for us. Yes, Admiral. Ship ready. Orders received. So what I've just done there is activate a focus target, and that will allow us to focus on the target regardless of our maneuvers. So we can maneuver the ship as as we please, and it will continue to engage. So this is more of an attrition match now between these two. And um, we certainly have the much higher shield value. So we could actually warp ourselves just a little bit forward there. And turn ourselves around. Awaiting orders. Underway. Fire torpedoes. Is that gonna hit? Ooh, that was a very good hit. So they've sustained heavy damage now, and they'll uh, they'll be trying to get away. We're not gonna let them. Let's turn ourselves around there. Oh, just scraping them. But that was very very close, and they got away. And of course, there's our victory screen right there. Ships that get destroyed, of course, are not permanently destroyed, and those. Uh, they do, however, lose any XP they might have gained, so that is something to be aware of. If you're wanting to build up your fleet, of course, then you are going to have to keep those ships alive. And you can, of course, just warp them out if they are going to die, so that is something to bear in mind. Escort ships, however, do not gain levels, and that's something to also bear in mind there. So our cruiser has gained a level, and we've gained uh, Renown, which is the currency in the game. And... We lost a little bit for fleet upkeep, which is something new that I've got because of this cruiser right here. And as you get more complex ships and larger numbers of ships, you are going to have to pay for upkeep. So you are going to need to win more often and have more decisive victories in order to win. Of course, you do get more for kills. If they warp out, it counts towards a victory, but you don't gain as much renown for doing that. So definitely getting the kills, of course, in true Warhammer style. It is probably best for you, and that was simply a 9 minute 30 match, but of course as matches get more complex, and of course if you play against other players, the matches might even be longer, so that's something there. And of course we do have an overall uh, Admiral level, I guess if you want to call it that. The, the current, um, yeah I guess it is called the Admiral, yeah the, the actual level uh, will go up and that will give you access to more ships. So. So yeah, that's just a very quick look at uh, Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Now this is coming out later on this month. I don't know the exact date, but when it does come out, of course, it's going to have a full campaign and it's going to have proper online modes. At the moment, the multiplayer is a little bit limited. It is just 1v1 public matchmaking, but you can have up to 2v2 matches. So two fleets against each other is going to be insanely amazing to watch. It's one of those games that I think, honestly... Playing it, I I personally enjoy it, but for a lot of people, this is going to be an amazing game to watch just because of the sheer amount of detail. I mean, look at this. Just the amount of detail. Look at the prow there. You wouldn't want to be pierced with that. And, of course, the, the batteries there as well. I mean, these are proper citadels of ships, really. Uh, uh, true Warhammer style of uh, ship design. And, of course, you can see in the background there as well, there's even bigger things. But yeah, so it's a very quick look at Battlefleet Gothic Armada. But I'm really hoping this turns out to be even better somehow when it comes out. I'm really enjoying it now, uh, even just the skirmish matches, but there's definitely going to be a lot more to it uh, once it's finally out. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Panzer. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you next time.